The law came today for an election clerk under investigation, and she chose not to remain silent. It hurts. Let go of me. A city council will consider booting a member tonight and picking her replacement themselves. Colorado needs our neighbor Utah to agree before we can preserve a dark moment in American history that happened on our own soil. And the Douglas County School District's meltdown is making national news as student journalists cover that story from the inside. I do have strong feelings, but I let the facts speak for themselves. Facts you'll like and facts you won't like. Together, in one place. Let's prove to cable news it can be done on Next, but before. Colorado's leading election rigging conspiracy theorist got arrested today. Video shows Republican Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters appearing to attempt to kick a law enforcement officer. She struggled with police. They had come for her iPad. She's accused of improperly recording a court hearing and then lying to a judge about it. Here's Steve Steger. So much has happened in the lead up to these few moments in a bagel joint in Grand Junction. It would be tough to sum it up on TV. That's Tina Peters, the Mesa County clerk, a hero in the election conspiracy theory world. Peters is the subject of investigations, both locally and federally, for allowing someone access to her county's voting systems, who later took that data to conspiracy theorists. But what happened here today in the shade of a tree inside Main Street Bagel in Grand Junction actually started yesterday in a Mesa County courtroom. Peters was in the gallery for a hearing for her deputy clerk, Belinda Nicely, charged with cyber crimes after prosecutors say she illegitimately gained access to computers in the clerk's office while she was suspended. This photo of that hearing yesterday was included in the search warrant. It shows Peters there in the front row behind an iPad. The search warrant says the judge asked her if she was recording the proceeding. Peters denied she was. Others saw her doing it, which led to the warrant and led police to the bagel shop this morning to seize Peter's iPad. Let go of me! A witness caught the moment on video as Peter struggled with officers, even attempting to kick one of them. It hurts! Let go of me! Give me my key! Oh, you understand? Stop it! The Grand Junction Police Department says Peter's was arrested and released on scene pending charges. Grand Junction police tell us that they expect an arrest affidavit will be filed soon, which could tell us if Peters might face any charges for her struggle with police this morning. The search warrant for Peters iPad indicated she could be charged with attempting to influence a public servant for recording that hearing. It's a class four felony, Kyle. A felony charge is no joke. I mean, Steve, I think everybody's parents at one point uh, told them when you're in a hole, stop digging. Yeah, you think about it, there are, there's the local investigation into what might have happened inside her office. There's the federal investigation into what might have happened inside her office. Then you throw on top of it the arrest of her deputy clerk, the court hearing here. She's caught apparently recording that hearing. And then on top of it might be facing charges for doing something in that arrest with police officers. Yeah, still haven't figured out what the FBI might have pulled out of her home back in November as well. Steve, thank you. She does still have her allies. We've reached out to the Colorado Republican Party to ask whether Clerk Peters should resign in light of her arrest and scuffle with law enforcement. This is actually the same question that we asked the Colorado GOP six months ago when Clerk Peters fled Colorado under the protection of my pill guy Mike Lindell. This is following the voting system breach in Mesa County. Colorado GOP has not yet answered the question. Douglas County School Board is still trying to explain why they fired a beloved superintendent. And it's going with mixed results. So Board President Mike Peterson says that Superintendent Corey Wise was fired in part for not pushing back on the teachers union claims that the district's equity policy had been gutted. But simultaneously this week, national conservative figures allied with the Doug Co Board are praising them for gutting the equity policy. One message for our local audience a completely different message for the national audience. There's also a lawsuit now against the board alleging that they violated Colorado open meeting law by having a series of small private meetings to decide to fire the superintendent, then coming out to do it publicly. That happened Friday at a meeting where public comment wasn't allowed. This idea of small closed door meetings by elected officials to make decisions without public scrutiny is what's known as a walking quorum. It's a strategy to avoid open meetings law so you don't know what's going on. Other states have specifically said that's not allowed, but the issue has not been decided by the courts in Colorado.
even if there's no Colorado law specifically outlawing or a uh, walking quorum, this still violates the spirit of it. Now, that will be something that the judge will have to decide. Just because we haven't had the issue in Colorado, that's fine. A judge can still and will uh, rule on that. A district court judge will, basically a trial court judge will make a decision, yes, this was a walking quorum, and therefore that was unlawful, or no, it wasn't. And then one side or the other can appeal it, or both sides, and once an appellate court in Colorado makes a decision, then it becomes binding here in Colorado. Douglas County could create precedent on this open records issue or this open meetings issue. So the Delco School Board decided to pay the outgoing superintendent a year's salary instead of coming up with a specific reason to fire him. They have since been more clear, saying that they fired him to keep the teachers union, which liked him, from gaining more power. Denver elections workers are going to take a ballot box out of the heart of the Five Points neighborhood soon before the conspiracy theories start up. We should tell you this is a temporary relocation of a popular voting spot. It's due to library construction. The Blair Caldwell Library is not going to be a voting location in Denver for the 2022 election. The voting box, which shh, it's sleeping under there, it, with its legally required video surveillance, is going to move to a new location, TBA. Denver elections just didn't want the rumor mill churning when it takes a, a voting box out of the heart of Denver's black community. It is always going to be the place in Boulder where 10 neighbors were killed in an instant last year. And conversations with the community led to the decision to renovate and reopen the Table Mesa King Supers. We got our first look inside today. Property is also eventually going to have a remembrance garden. King Supers told us that the store has additional security features. They do not get into specifics. If I could level with you, I've covered politics in Colorado for about a decade or so and have not seen the sheer volume of bonker stuff we have seen from elected officials lately. Infighting, open incompetence, power plays, just plain defiance to the law. The latest city to turn into dysfunction junction is Thornton. Tonight, some members of city council will consider declaring one of their opponents to be a non-resident of Thornton so they can then replace her with somebody they choose. Our Marshall Zellinger looks at how that's possible. What does it mean to be a resident? I have my vehicle registration, car insurance, driver's license, voter registration, property taxes, the deed to the uh, condo that I own in Thornton. That's a lot of paper, but is it proof of residency? Why don't you live in Thornton? <laughs> I do live in Thornton. Jackie Phillips had to live in Thornton to even be elected as a city council member, but tonight she has to defend still being a resident. Conservative members of the council may push for a vote tonight to declare her seat vacant. Are you trying to kick somebody off council? No. We're not trying to kick anybody off of council. Thornton Mayor Pro Tem Jessica Sandgren has provided her own proof to show Phillips is really a resident of another city, a loan document for a home in Alamosa. She signed a document that says she agrees to the terms of the conditions of the loan, and one of those conditions is you must use and occupy as your primary residence. Over the summer, Phillips bought a home in Alamosa when she was hired as the full-time executive director of the San Luis Valley BOCES, which provides educational services for 14 San Luis Valley school districts. And yeah, that loan document for her Alamosa home has a paragraph saying she must make it her principal residence within 60 days and continue to make it her principal residence for at least one year. Obviously, I talked to my loan company about this before I even got the loan. I never moved. So my condo is here. My business is here. My law office is here. I didn't move. I live in Thornton. If she owned 100 homes, we, we don't care about that. It's where is your primary residence? How often are you in Alamosa? I do. I do a back and forth. So, you know, it depends. Um, do you live in Alamosa long, more than you live in Thornton? <laughs> I have to ask. I never moved from Thornton. But that, so I, I mean, I have to, where do you spend more of your time? I do a back and forth. It's pretty, it's pretty split, actually. It's a, it's a pretty, it's a fairly even split. Phillips believes this question should be decided by voters if they want to try to recall her, not by a board that could select her replacement if her seat is deemed vacant. I'll just be blunt. Are you going to pick someone that's going to vote alongside you? No, I want someone that's going to represent the city. Council members resigning because they move. That's not unheard of. It happened in Aurora and Parker in the last two years. Here you have someone claiming they still live in Thornton, but also working and living elsewhere. 
I spoke with Phillips's lender and a national bro brokerage association. And bottom line, Kyle, primary residence is essentially don't rent this out in the first year of living here, but mm -hmm. someone could from the lender go and do a, a residency check and see if the person's living there. Is it just me or is it like bonkers everywhere now? I mean, you've got this, you've got Mesa County, you've got Douglas County, you've got several city councils in the metro area that'll sit there and vote ties for mm -hmm. hours into the wee morning because nobody will give an inch. It seems to be happening all the time now. Yeah, I'm not used to this. And, and it, I can think of it on a national scale, look at like a Supreme Court just, are we ever gonna have like a 100 to zero for something like that? Are we ever gonna have unanimous votes in local government anymore? Or mm -hmm. is it all gonna be division based on your political party or in a nonpartisan situation, just which way you lean? I don't know, it feels uncomfortable that we're moving in that direction. Yeah, and, and another thing I've noticed is that it's not just that your opponent is wrong, they're bad, they're evil. More of that from national politics is steeped into local. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks Marshall. We have a unique look at what's going on within our schools and directly how that impacts students because we're students ourselves. A different perspective on the turmoil in Dugco schools from a student on the inside. And the chance to preserve the site in Colorado that was used to inter Japanese Americans. It's on hold right now because of Utah. That's next. The city of Colorado Springs is paying the family of a man shot and killed by police $3 million, despite it being deemed a justified shooting. Devon Bailey was shot and killed by Colorado Springs police in August of 2019. Body camera video showed that Bailey was running away from officers when they shot him in the back. Officers said they believed he was going for a gun at the time. A grand jury later ruled that those officers were justified in their actions. Despite that determination from the grand jury, the city has now decided it will not take its chances at trial on that shooting. They're going to pay the Bailey family $2.97 million. Colorado's congressional delegation wants Amachi in southeastern Colorado added to the national park system and fast, like in the next two weeks. This idea is nearly universally supported in Congress, but a senator from Utah is blocking it. Amachi is the World War II era Japanese American internment camp near Granada. Legislation designating Amachi as a National Historic Site was introduced last spring by Democratic Senators Michael Bennett and John Hickenlooper. Their support in the House from Democratic Congressman Jonah Goose and Republican Congressman Ken Buck. That bill passed the House almost unanimously, 416 to 2. In the Senate, 99 of 100 senators are on board. But one is objecting with the power to hold it up. Republican Senator Mike Lee of Utah. He apparently wants to add an amendment to the bill, but he's not in Washington right now to do it. Senator Bennett said they feel it's important to get this thing passed before February 19th. That's the day on the calendar in 1942 when President Roosevelt signed the executive order that forced people of Japanese descent, including U.S. citizens, into those camps in the name of preventing espionage. What a great weather pattern for February. Sunshine, 50s, and a little bit of mountain snow tomorrow. A third storm we're tracking for the week may bring some snow to Denver on Friday. Highs today above average for many areas. Average high this time of year is in the mid-40s. We'll watch as high pressure keeps that warm, stable layer of air over Colorado, even with a series of weather systems crossing the state from the north toward the east. We'll get a few high clouds tonight, a little mountain snow tomorrow, but not enough to worry about in terms of traveling up there. There are no advisories for snow or travel. Fair skies and 26 in Denver tonight. Sunshine and 50 tomorrow. Warming up on Thursday ahead of that Friday storm. Cooler and windy to end the week with a few snow showers and then a mild dry weekend. Sunshine with highs close to 60 on Sunday and Monday. You got every TV show in America rooting for Team USA in Beijing right now. And I mean, we are too. But you also know we like to keep our relationship spicy by bringing another country into the mix. And this year it's Iceland. Oh, I almost dropped it. Did you see that? That was a good catch. Poor Iceland, full of ice, uh, yet not a single Winter Olympic medal to show for it. I will say that when we agreed to make Iceland our underdog to root for in this Olympics, I was unprepared for how hard Icelandic stuff is to say. But let's play the national anthem, the, the Lofshunkur. The Lofshunkur, it means him in Icelandic was written in 1874 to commemorate the millennium of Iceland settlement. The millennium, 1,000 years and no Winter Olympic medal. That did not change today. Kristrún Gudnadóttir competed in the women's cross country skiing sprint early this morning. Just a touch outside, she finished 74th and did not qualify for the medal round. 
Her countryman, Isaac Stiansen Pedersen, did not feature much better in the men's sprint free. He finished 78th and also failed to qualify for the medal round. So next up, next, hold, hold out hope, next up will be Holferder Dora Fridgerstodier. She's competing in her second discipline, women's slalom, tomorrow night. We hold out hope for her because this is where Iceland's current medal count stands. Zeros. This is mean. We should stop showing this. Go Iceland. For a young person, it takes some courage to make this demand. I feel like for people with a student's first, a kid's first platform, that they should probably talk to me. A student journalist in Douglas County Schools is leading coverage of her own superintendent's firing. She shares her perspective with us next. Douglas County School District leaders have been swamped with questions from journalists ever since the school board fired the superintendent at a train wreck of a meeting last Friday. Some of those calls have been coming from inside the house, from student journalists, whose perspective on this issue seems pretty important. Okay, with that, we will proceed to the roll call. I was on YouTube watching that live stream very closely. I had my Google Docs pulled up next to me and I was writing down any notable quotes. I think we heard the voters loud and clear in November and the district moves in a different direction. I was just like shocked to my core and I would, I would write something down. My name is Kira Zizzo. I'm the editor in chief of The Rock, Rock Canyon High School's newspaper, and I'm in 12th grade. At The Rock, we normally cover everything that's going on and that's impacting students in our school. So in the last few weeks, we've been reporting on everything that's been happening with the school board. This is what democracy looks like. We've been getting our boots on the ground, going to the student walkouts, going to teacher protests, and interviewing people there. This is what what democracy looks like. And I think that we have a unique look at what's going on within our schools and directly how that impacts students because we're students ourselves. I know how much it impacts kids. I see it every day as I walk through the halls. I see that students are frustrated. I personally have reached out to all of the conservative board majority members and none of them even answered my emails. And I feel like for people with a student's first, a kid's first platform, that they should probably talk to me because I'm a student journalist and I think that my voice matters in our community just as much as theirs. <laughs> student journalism should be regarded as, as more reputable, as more respected because we're really, we're putting in the work and we're putting in the effort to make sure that the truth is being reported and that we're dictating fact from fiction and magnifying that and letting people in the community know about that. Appreciate Kara sharing her story through the lens of photojournalist Foster Gaines. She has been committing journalism since elementary school, when she got her start writing articles for the kids section of the Denver Post. Hey, just check the email. The state Republican Party has commented on the arrest of clerk Tina Peters. Buckle your seatbelts for that and your feedback next. Hi, I'm next producer Kevin Larson. We aren't showing Olympic highlights here because of network restrictions, but if you're into that sort of thing, check out the Olympic Zone with Tom Green after next at 5.30. A lot of feedback like Emily's, who writes, white privilege is trying to kick a law enforcement officer but being let go anyway. Reference to video of the arrest of Republican Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters caught on camera. We have been asking the Colorado Republican Party for six months if she should resign. We got a soft no from them tonight. They said, quote, the Colorado Republican Party believes in law and order. We believe the legal process should work its way out. More to work out today than there was yesterday. We'll see you next time.